Shamanism is the newest and most out there skill idea pitched by Jagex. This idea combines gathering, production, and utility into one, with an in-world explanation that gives great potential for lore and lets us explore new areas of RuneScape. Let's go over why I think this skill has the most potential to totally revitalize the best parts of the game in a way that feels exciting and new, but also old school. But first, be sure to subscribe. The core gameplay of shamanism feels pretty similar to other skills. Uh, you're studying the power of nature through shamanism and unlocking the ability to perform rituals. That sounds pretty old school. The first step is to gather natural components. These are going to be new resources like mushrooms and bark that you can forge from places across the map or animal byproducts that might come from hunter or combat or maybe some new activities altogether. This is basically the same as gathering any resource that we do right now. Albeit it may come through some different methods um, that are unique to this skill and they might be, you know, just a might different than the standard resources that we see day to day. Then there's a second group of items called spiritual components, and they're going to be gathered in a new unique way that's totally specific to the skill and at new unique sites, at places where the spirit world draws close to the physical. So basically new gathering sites across the map, and they're going to call them disturbed sites. The blog says that these components are going to be mostly untradeable, and I feel like that's a good starting approach that can be adjusted as time goes on. Untradeable resources are good for the game because it encourages gathering your own supplies in order to gather supplies and not just doing gathering to get experience. This means that the gathering XP can be adjusted because that's XP is not the whole reward and the items that you're getting are part of the reward. And maybe that means something like, uh, you know, tick manipulating becomes either more valuable because you're getting a lot of items at once or less valuable because you have to bank them. Um, but that's something that, you know, you can work on depending on the various methods. Um, however, you know, some of the resources could definitely be tradable because we do have a bit of a lack of tradable resources that are still worth something and still worth gathering for money in the game. So maybe, you know, someone wants to do just the gathering portion of the skill for some lower experience, but, you know, they're selling these mushrooms for about 5k each. I think that would be something that would definitely be valuable addition, and I think the best approach would be to have some of both. So ultimately, players with money can speed up their XP, and players without money can take the slow route by gathering everything they would need, and not just the untradeable components. Next, you need to use your resources to combine them into new items. So this is basically your production portion of the skill. And this is very similar to everything that we have in our normal production skills right now. You're creating something new at a dedicated production site. So where cooking, your production site is a stove or a fire. In this case, the production site is a ritual circle. So it's basically you create a ritual circle anywhere, and then you start producing your items. And I'm guessing that this is where the bigger chunks of experience are going to come from, because you spend time to get the resources that gives you some experience and then you cash it out by producing stuff it happens a lot faster consumes all your resources and that's where you get the big xp drops that you're really going to enjoy so you're basically cashing hours cashing out the hours you spent making stuff and getting resources in that long time into the shorter periods of time it should be larger than the xp drops from um, gathering otherwise people would just gather and not produce and what's the point of that I think some of the XP, a large amount of the XP probably, has to be tied into the production part of it. And so that's basically the base of the skill. And I think that it has good potential. The magical items can really be anything. It can be armor or weapon buffs. It could be food, potions, blessing, passive effects, even utility items like storage, uh, tool combiners, um, you know, something like maybe uh, like if you want to go crazy, you can have a bag that can hold two more inventory items. Um, so basically, you're getting extra inventory space. Maybe that's too overpowered, maybe not. Maybe you tie it to a high level. The possibilities are pretty endless, and they can be tuned over time as new rewards are pulled from quests, from high-level content. And just over time, people will come up with new things that they want or you know, buff things that aren't doing that much for you. Uh, one thing that I think should a factor into it is that if the production of these items is a key part of the experience, we should have a natural sync for them on release. 
So, you know, something like archaeology and RS3, you are restoring artifacts, but then if you don't have anything else to do with them, you could just give them into the museum and you get some uh, currency back. It's basically like Alking, but instead of Alking, like you have a natural place to put them. That's a natural sink. I just hope that we have something like that on release. Um, maybe you're giving them to the other shamans or you're returning it to nature or you're doing something of the sort that really helps uh, get rid of your finished products when you don't need them because you're not always going to need them. And now that we've looked at that, that could be the whole skill. You know, you're communing with nature, you're uh, producing new items, you're gathering new items. That's like a key part of RuneScape and it could be the whole skill, but it's not. The next part of the skill and the part that I think has the most potential is the spirit realm. So this sentence right here, increasing your shamanism level grants you access to more rituals and deeper parts of the spirit realm. So what does that mean? The spirit realm. Well, here's what it could mean. As you level up in shamanism, you can enter the spirit realm. The spirit realm is described in the blog as, let's scroll down. The spirit realm is described in the blog as an alternate reality po populated by spirits. It's a mirror of Gelenor you know and love, but it's subtly different. So what does that mean? Okay, it's another plane where we're exploring RuneScape. We're exploring Gelenor. It's the same place we know, but it's different. Okay, it's inhabited by spirits. So there's new NPCs. There's new details. The game is different. The place we're exploring is different, but also subtly the same. This is the golden nugget in the pitch. We get to explore RuneScape, the RuneScape we know, as a new location, once again. You know, I'm by Port Serum right now. Up north from here, there's Falador. Or is there? What does Falador look like in the spirit realm? Is there something going on with the White Knights, the Temple Knights, or the Black Knights that have made Falador different? Is there a spiritual component to their battle? What happens when we pass over White Wolf Mountain and we find Catherby, normally a peaceful fishing village, but now on this side, it's controlled by dark spirits? You know, something about the way that the wolves have caused a lot of death over time and, you know, maybe something to do with uh, the, like, all the fishing deaths or something, like, something went wrong at some point in history and Catherby is not what we think it might be. What happens when Mauritania... You know, the dark, vampire-infested place that we know it is. Becomes home to the once-thriving population of Ceridominus that used to live there. Or even the last remnants of the Iceen population. They fled to the spirit realm and they were trapped in time ever since the vampire invasion. Ever since the Third Age. That's crazy. That could happen. What happens in the wilderness, where the unholy damage of the God Wars has spread beyond the physical realm into the spirit realm? What does that mean for up there? What would it look like? This has the potential to totally rewrite our understanding of the game world by giving it to us a second time on another plane. And it doesn't have to be all at once. I really don't think that the mods are going to double our map size by giving us an entirely new map to explore, all on release. But it can happen piece by piece. As we level up, that's a natural barrier to unlock. Just be like, oh man, I leveled up. I can open a new spirit realm portal. I found a rift near Varrock, and I can go to the Spirit Realm version. Or you do a quest, and someone says, we finally, you know, communed with the Spirit Plane around Ardun, like we want to see what's going on. And you say, you know what, I'm level 60 shamanism, I can do that. And the quest allows you to move into the Spirit Realm in a new place and explore it like you've never seen it before. I think that's really awesome. The lore can tight right into existing content, as I said, like the vampire invasion, uh, you know, like things like the white knight uh, battle, or it could be totally new. Like we can have, you know, something going on in the spirit realm that we never knew about um, and the physical realm because it's just a brand new thing. Maybe Varlamore knows something about the spirit realm, and then we go down and, and experience the expansion of Zaya on two planes at once, on the physical and on the spirit realm plane. I think that would be really sick. And, you know, maybe the leagues could be tied into it. You know, people don't necessarily want the league's lore to be part of the main game, but 
I think that they have been doing some pretty interesting stuff with the lore and giving us a lot of hints and, you know, for sure that spirits could be part of that, both good and bad. And the spirit realm, you know, could definitely be part of it. Leagues, after all, is an alternate plane of Gelenor. You know, it's the same sort of idea, except it's just a bit more similar to the one we know and love, just with some extra powers. But uh, you could definitely make it a bit crazier if you wanted to, like, do a spirit realm league where everyone starts in the spirit realm and then goes from there. One of the ways I think that this is a great idea is that it performs, um, it forms a great way for shamanism's buffs to feed back into itself. So if if the spirit realm gameplay, exploring the spirit realm and you know progressing your game there is a core part of the reward space for the skill, then buffing that experience is more valuable than changing the existing game. So instead of saying like. Um, I want a, a spirit that doubles my rune ore per hour or something. You know, that changes the game a lot because you're like, wow, suddenly rune mining is double um, the ore per hour that it used to be. Like, that's quite a significant change. But what if instead of uh, that happening, you would say, like, double the time you can spend in the spirit realm before having to go back to the physical realm? Like, that's obviously a key buff to spirit realm gameplay but it doesn't really affect mining or anything else that's going on in the main game. So if you have this reward space where, you know, it's a key part of the experience and it's all new, then you can spend a lot of your buffs in the skill increasing that experience and like buffing that experience. And like, while eventually it would all tie back into your main gameplay, um, it means that you wouldn't have to buff existing gameplay too much for it to feel rewarding because you would be leveling up your experience as you go nonetheless. I think the Spirit Realm is by far the most exciting part of this pitch, and it has the most potential. Obviously, I want to keep our expectations reasonable, but I am excited to see what we can think up. With Shamanism, it seems like the sky is the limit. Or is it? If you like this video, um, again, pretty sure to subscribe, leave a like. Um, tell me what you want uh, for the top three skills, and I'm thinking I'll probably make a video for the other two skills as well after this. Um, so stick around and maybe check out some of the other videos while you're here. But until next time, peace.